So I'm making chicken soup. It's rain, it's snowing outside, it's cold. Um, we have a beautiful chicken here. It's a pretty large chicken. And uh, I thought, well, it's a soup day. So why not chicken soup? I think it's one of your favorites, right? Yes, definitely. It's yep. a Jewish chicken soup. Jewish chicken soup. And you gotta be a Jew to make Jewish chicken soup. That's true. Right. Roll up my sleeves. Let's get to it, shall mm -hmm. we? Um, okay. I'm gonna do something very interesting with this chicken before I start uh, putting in the pot. Do you know what that is? What do you think I'm gonna do? What are you gonna do? What do I always do with the chicken? What? I search for the fat and I pull it out. Schmaltz, as they say. Schmaltz. Mm -hmm. it, I, I yank these huge hunk of fat off the chicken and I render it. See? It's like gold. And of course, you know, when I make chopped liver, I always saute my, my livers and my onions in chicken fat. But I don't buy chicken fat. I always render my own chicken fat. Mm -hmm. So uh, um, let me just get a glass over here. And uh, I like to render it. I'll show you how to do that later. But I'm going to take my nice chicken fat and I'm going to put it in. You always get a nice hunk from the inside there. Let's even get a nice another piece here. Some small piece, nothing really big. Let's see. Yeah, yank that off. There's some nice piece here too. Yeah, look at that. That's beautiful. Put that in there. I'll get some nice chicken fat out of that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Also, of course, take the insides out. Yeah. Oh, shoot. Don't throw anything away. That's the necks and the hearts and the livers. I will save the livers. I will cook the heart, the gizzards, and the neck with the chicken to make a really flavorful, flavorful soup. But the liver, I will save. I have a little bag in the freezer that I save from all my chickens because you know I always buy whole chickens and I and I butcher them myself. Um, if I want to make some roast chickens or fried chicken or whatever I'm going to do, I buy a whole chicken. It's so much cheaper. I mean, these were on sale. I think they were like 79 cents a pound. I bought a couple of them and threw them in the freezer. So, you know, whenever I'm ready to do something with chicken, I yank it out. So instead of buying chicken pieces or chicken parts or chicken thighs or, or breasts, I buy the whole chicken and I cut it up myself. Mm -hmm. Good money saving tip, don't you think? Yeah, that's very good. Right. Tip. So let me show you some of the ingredients that I'm going to be using in my soupy sides chicken, of course. An onion, some celery, a few leeks, a little bit of leek there, some carrots, parsnips. I love parsnips in my chicken soup. Um, gives a little bit of sweetness um, and you get sort of a, a little bit of starchiness like a potato, but I don't really like putting potatoes in, in soup. Turn up. Some fresh parsley. Again, as I've said before, I just went and harvested some of this from the sunroom where we got some fresh parsley still growing. Some nice herbs are still, still going strong. And a little bit of dill. You know, everyone likes dill in chicken soup. You know, I like dill in chicken soup, but I don't like too much. I don't like my chicken soup to taste like all dill. Uh, I find that it's... It's just too, too overpowering. Just a touch of dill. I think that's enough for a nice pot of chicken soup. Let me grab, grab a knife here. I'm going to get a, a potato peeler. And what I want to do is peel my potatoes, peel my turnips, peel my um, parsnips, and get my veggies ready. Chopped up all my vegetables, and that's really the most time-consuming thing: the preparation and all the all the uh, chopping and slicing and dicing and, and making all the vegetables ready. Just one more time: we've got onions, leeks, celery, carrots, parsnips, turnips, fresh parsley from our herb garden, and some dill also. 
So what I'm going to do now is take this beast of a chicken. I mean, this is a really a big chicken. Put it in my nice big soup pot. Um, I do not rinse my chicken under water, by the way. You get salmonella everywhere. You don't rinse your chicken. So I take my chicken. I do um, take all the in insides out. Nothing left inside there. Pulled out the fat, if you remember, so I can render it. Remember I did that? And in goes the chicken into the pot. Into the pot he goes. Then all my chopped up vegetables. Here we go. Oh, right on top. Everything into the pot. Here we go. And again, you know, some people like, don't like to use parsnips. A little controversial, they say. But I love it. I really do. I always, always put the parsnip in my soup. Okay. What do we have left here? What mysterious things do we have from the inside of the chicken? Okay, let's review. This is the liver. This I'm going to save. I have a little baggie of them frozen in the freezer. So I collect enough and I make some chopped liver. The neck, or what's left of the neck, is a, the next two pieces. Into the pot, neck, wonderful flavor. The heart. The heart is my favorite part. I love chicken hearts. I literally love chicken hearts. So that'll be the chef's treat when I fish it out at the end. In it goes. The gizzards, uh, I don't even know what a gizzard is. What is a gizzard? A, a gizzard, I think it uh, filters out like mm -hmm. something from the chicken. I, you would think I would know that. Mm -hmm. In it goes. Okay, now we're ready for the next step. The broth, okay. Water or broth or stock? That's the question. You know, I know a lot of people who make chicken soup and their chicken soup is just blah. And they start off with water, right? You know, I really firmly believe that if you start off with broth, you'll get a much richer soup. So I've actually got a combination of store-bought stock and my own homemade stock. Uh, remember what I told you, I often buy chickens and I cut them up. Well, I save the backs to the chickens and I put them in the freezer. And when I have all sort of leftover vegetables or vegetable ends, I make stock and put it in the freezer. And this is what you get. But I don't have enough. That dog's very excited about my chicken soup. <laughs> so I don't have enough, so I'm going to have to use a combination. So some homemade stock. And there we go. And my favorite brand. Mm -hmm. I won't mention what it is. You can see it. <laughs> my favorite brand of stock. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes I buy low sodium, sometimes I don't. And I also think that there's another key to a very rich chicken soup is the flavor from the bones. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cook this on the stove for all about 30 to 45 minutes. I'm going to bring it up to a simmer. Let me just cover the entire soup. I'm going to bring it up to a simmer. And then after about 30, 40 minutes, I'm going to take the chicken out of the soup, let it cool a bit so I can handle it and remove the chicken from the bones. But the secret, put the bones back in the soup. And of course the chicken too. But now you've got the exposed bones into the soup. It was before you had it just covered with meat and skin. But once you've got the bone exposed into the soup, you're gonna get a great flavor. So I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna simmer it. Just, I use this perfect amount, it's just covered. Just covering your soup. And uh, onto the stove it goes. Uncovered, of course. And we'll see that chicken in 30 to 45 minutes. So a couple of things while that chicken is cooking away. Uh, my nice liver, and I took out of my freezer some of my livers that I've had from past chickens. Um, put that in there. And when this bag is full, this is gonna make a really good chopped liver. Um, we'll do that in the future, of course. Uh, that's when I saute onions and chicken liver and some hard boiled egg, grind it all up in the grinder. And of course, the secret ingredient, which you have to have for authentic chopped liver. You've gotta have chicken fat or schmaltz, which I'm going to show you how to render right now. This is what the end result is right here. This is beautifully rendered chicken fat. 
and you could buy it in the store, but why? Why buy it? Why buy it? <laughs> Make it, right? It's free. It's free. You would just throw that away. And if you left it in the soup, it would just be floating on top of the soup. So let's make it right now. So uh, let me just hang up and grab a paper towel here. You don't want too much water. You don't want too much water on your chicken fat because then it kind of makes a mess. So I'm just going to dry it out a bit really quick. Right, just you know, dab it down. So this is, this is pure fat from the chicken. I just yanked it off. You saw how easy that was. All right? Get rid of that. And... This is a microwave safe. Uh, I like a clear one, this way I can kind of peek what's going on. Put it on the plate, this way it doesn't uh, make a mess in the microwave. Cover it with saran wrap. This is actually a cling type or whatever that is. It's not saran, saran is a brand. Make it nice and tight. Put it on here. Poke a little vent hole in it. If you don't poke a vent hole in it, you will be sorry, it will make a mess. It'll go boom, and chicken fat everywhere. Trust me, I've know, I know, I've done it. So, a couple of holes in there. Into the microwave it goes. Have an impeccably clean microwave, look at that. Right in there, close that. Two minutes, and we will have chicken fat, schmaltz, liquid gold. So it's just about ready. And there it is, perfect timing. Take it out. Ah, oh, you see the fat is sort of sizzling away. Be careful that uh, mug will be very hot. So do be careful. It's been, so let me take the, peel the saran wrap off. Very carefully because this, like, like I said, this is very hot. Now inside here, I've got two dried up pieces of chicken skin that gave up its fatty goodness for us. And my grandmother called this gribbonous. It gets nice and crispy. You put a little salt on it. She always said, grind that up in the chopped liver. But I've never done it because I love it so much I always eat it. But I can never wait to make the chopped liver. So I'll put that over there on the side. Now just take a look at this. I have to say, no one. I've never seen anyone Render chicken fat like this. I think it's my own creation. I'm going to patent it, I think. Um, you just have this pure, crystal clear, no brown bits. Look how beautiful that is. And I took out some of my frozen chicken fat that I'd made before. And I'm just going to add it to it. And that's what I do each time. I just keep on adding to the container of frozen chicken fat. So look at this. It's beautiful. Look, and, and the hot melts a little and it all... This is amazing, look at the color. Uh, I remember my mom always telling me, she grew up kosher, that she would take the chicken fat and smear it on a piece of toast and eat it that way. To me, that's kind of uh, nasty, but you have to think that if you're not eating butter on bread, how good would that be? Um, so mom, are you proud of me? Grandma, are you proud of me for making amazing schmaltz from a hunk of chicken fat? As the chicken is cooking along, you get this sort of scum that appears on top of scummy foam that I like to periodically skim off. See, just, and then just deposit it for later. And I'll do that periodically, say three or four times in the time that this chicken soup is going to cook. Uh, you get a nice, more clear broth, a uh, little less cloudy and um, I don't know, I've always done it and I will always continue to do it. So Max, are you excited? My the boy, my the boy, you excited? Yes. Give me a hand. Okay. Okay, aside from Max, <laughs> who, who doesn't help in the kitchen one bit, although sometimes <laughs> when, I fall, but when, when I drop things, he does come yes, and Yes, that's up. true. Right. All right, so, so where are we so far? Okay, so I took the whole chicken out of the soup. I just plopped it here for about, 10 minutes so I don't burn my hands when I start cutting it up. Mm, okay, so, so basically what I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, cut some of this meat off the bone. I'm going to get rid of or discard the parts that we don't want. That's the skin, we don't want that in the soup. Yeah, so we'll get that. The chickens will get that. And I'm going to cut some of this wonderful meat off the bone. 
just, just yank it off. Right? Make a nice, that's the piece of breast. I'm going to just basically cut it up into bite-sized pieces. We actually kind of like larger pieces in our chicken. Some mm -hmm. people, in our chicken soup, some people shred them. Mm -hmm. I mean, so, like strings of it. Yeah, there. So, so you could shred it if you want like this. Just, it shred, because it's got that fibers. You could shred it like this and do that. So I, I think what I kind of do is a, a combination of both. Some I shred, some I cut, but discarding definitely all the skin. And if there's any, you know, grizzly pieces, I'll get rid of that. And, and then what I'll do is, for example, here, I'm going to take this off here and I'm going to take the skin, again, take the skin off. I just want to show you this one piece and then we'll uh, come back to the video later. But so I'm going to take the, the chicken off. This is the dark meat from the leg. And you have to be careful. There's a little pieces of grizzle in here. And the chicken is not probably 100% cooked through and through, but then of course it'll finish in there. So now I've got a majority of it. And basically you've got this bone. This bone is where the flavor is. So I'm not going to toss this away. I'm going to deposit this back in the soup, back in the pool it goes, and that's going to develop great flavor. And I think that's where my chicken soup really differs from others because I'll take all those bones and every, every bone, and I'll, I'll take the whole carcass. Um, get this leg off again. And I'll, I'll cut this off. I'll all, and I'll, again, get rid of the skin, give that to the chickens. It's kind of like chickens eating chicken. Yes. Like kind of <laughs> and I'll take the meat off, and this will go back in. Of course, this junk's going to sit here. Again, this great bone. Here we go again. The bone into the soup. It goes. And I'll take this. Chop these up into bite-sized pieces. Combination of dark meat, a combination of white meat. I like the both. I'm I'm really a fan of dark meat. I know, Dave, you're, you. I love my white meat. You love your white meat, but in a soup, you really want both. You really want the flavor from the dark meat. You want the nice, firm bites from the beautiful white meat. Mm, that was dumb. Mm -hmm. Hey, look! I'll take all this meat. back in the soup. Mm -hmm. And I'll continue to do that. It'll take me maybe 10 or 15 minutes. I'll get rid of all the meat and uh, we'll come back to the soup later. So give me a few minutes. So I pretty much have gotten 90% of the meat, probably more than that, off the carcass. But this is, again, what is going to impart so much flavor into the soup. So I'm, I'm going to take that whole carcass. Um, the thigh bones are in there. Um, the, the leg bones are in there. The wing bones, they're a little kind of small, so I don't put them in. But I'll take this whole car uh, carcass and plop this in there. I know this kind of looks kind of gross, but really, trust me, this is going to be great. Plop it, submerge in there, simmer away for, oh, another half hour or so, and uh, the soup will be done. Um, I like to add some noodles to make chicken noodle soup, so I'll probably put some little noodles in there. But that's up to you. You can put anything in there. Uh, you can put stars. You can ditalini in there, you know, whatever kind of noodles you got. Um, and uh, that'll, that'll be it. So I would say that soup will be done in a half an hour. So the taste test. Yes. The soup so, is done. Soup Let's is just done. take a look. How at everything we got really beautiful carrots and celery. celery and dark meat and white meat and some of like the noodles and very very rich broth right there look at that's that that's what we're hoping for mm -hmm. we're hoping that those bones really gave it a really rich let flavor. me taste let me so, taste so okay we haven't tried it yet this oh. is actually the first taste and it's hot oh my gosh it's so good so good. It's always comes out perfect. Yeah, this is one of the things um, I've made for many, many years. Yes. Yeah. Oh my gosh, it's so good. So, thumbs up. 
Come on. Thumbs up. Uh. Oh. <laughs> Max is looking too. Yep. You definitely know that uh, you're getting some uh, 